Thank you, Betty. Um, um, thank you all here. Um, thank you, the TCD program, the Amazon Dems Network. It's a pleasure being here in Gainesville. Um, so I'll be presenting here uh, part of my PhD, a chapter. Uh, so it's uh, preliminary results about this chapter that I'm uh, working on it in this period here in the US. So the name, uh, Professor Navy, maybe it will change. It's um, implications of hydrological alterations triggered by the Belamonte Dam among the Arara, Arara indigenous people in the Xingu River in the Brazilian Amazon. So as Betty said, I'm from uh, University of Sao Paulo, uh, environmental science program. My supervisor is Professor Evandro Moreto. Uh, my co-supervisor is Professor Simone Taigi. Both are from the Amazon Dams Network. Um, and also this specific chapter has some co-authors that are collaborating. There is a postdoc, uh, Claire Beveridge from Florida International University. Uh, Guilherme Lobo from Unicamp, State University of Campinas, and Ciro Asahira from University of Sao Paulo, uh, from the same program as mine. So I'd like to thank uh, Florida International University, who is the university who is hosting me in, in Miami, in the US, as a visiting scholar at uh, the Latin American Caribbean Center and in the PROBRAS, the Pro Program of Excellence in Brazilian Studies. And also thanks to the CAPES agency who is uh, financing this uh, visiting scholar period. So, yeah. These are some pictures of the, the region, the big bend of Shingu River, which is this 130 kilometers stretch of the, the Shingu River. And these are pictures from the surroundings of the Arara villages, which is a very specific uh, landscape, uh, waterscape. Um, this Shingu River, which is the, the, the biggest tributary of clear waters of the Amazon basin. And um, it has a really com complex mosaic of environments and waterscapes, a very rocky uh, river in this, in this stretch, and also the uh, has the importance of the, the flood pools and uh, the Igapos and the alluvial, the alluvial forest has uh, a very big importance for the, the food of the aquatic fauna. So 83% of the biomass it, it comes from the fruits, from the, the alluvial forest. And uh, the river as this main uh, communication between communities, around 2,000 people lives in this region. Um, and they have this network of social relations and uh, navigation for access to services. And also, of course, uh, uh, material and intangible cultural heritage that can be seen in archaeology and, and the, symb the symbolic aspects of the river. So in this region there are settled the Arara da Volta Grande do Xingu, or just Arara, which is the name of the, the tribe. Um, the name of the indigenous land is Arara da Volta Grande do Xingu, which is Arara, the big band of Xingu River. So um, they are, they now, they, they are in four villages, around 200 and something inhabitants. And they have this uh, specific cultural history of some of sometimes called emergence or resistance or ethnogenesis from the anthropological perspective. Uh, because they have this intense inter-ethnic contact, uh, they have this process of different uh, economic activities that was settled in the region and the process of articulation of the political, social, religious and cultural structure. And the Arara from the Arara the Volta Grande do Xingu indigenous land, it's a, this, they are descendants of a sub, subgroup of Arara that was uh, in the region of Bacaja River, which is next to uh, the indigenous land. 
and they also are descended of uh, Juruna, which are also called Yuja tribe. So the indigenous land demarcation process is very recent, and uh, they before they they were always settled in the, the place they are now, but they were recognized uh, their indigenous identity much later uh, because uh, serious because a lot of processes and uh, the demarcation studies start only in 2004 and the demarcation process of indigenous lands in Brazil uh, is headed by the PUNAI agency and has some steps. So in, in 2008 was the declaration, the Caração de Posse, which uh, the first step where they have the decree of uh, and the limitations, the limits established. But only in 2015, you have the homologation, which is the last step. And when the occupant, occupants of the indigenous land, the non-indigenous that are in the, the indigenous land, they are removed only in this final step. And if you look in the gray boxes, uh, the licensing process of the Belo Monte Dam was overlapping this demarcation process. So uh, they were not only fighting for this recognition of their indigenous identity, but also was part of the resistance and social movement against the dam with uh, a lot of uh, participating of social movement, uh, movement Chico Vivo, and also occupation of construction sites. And uh, here, for example, photo when Schwarzenegger and James Cameron visit their villages during this process of resistance. And so the, li the, the license of operation of Belamonte Dam was in 2015 after the homologation of the indigenous. So the big band of Shingu River is this region. It has this name because of the, the shape, this big band that the, the river does in this region, which is the, the division between the plateau and the lowland Amazon. So uh, after this Belo Monte, let me just show you. Can you see my arrow? Maybe, um, here. So after this part here, you have the division between the typical lowland Amazon uh, system. And before that, upstream that, you have this rocky, very, uh, a lot of uh, meanders and waterfall and rapids, which is uh, the main characteristics of this specific region that is called the Big Bend of Shingo River. So uh, it's really a, a division between ecosystems. And so this is where the Arara indigenous land is settled, this red one. And this is how the Big Bend was before the Belamonte Dam's construction. So the, the the upstreams, the Shingo River is, uh, starts in the Mato Grosso state and comes direction north and in Big Bend, it does this curve and then goes to the Amazon River. So um, here we have also another indigenous land from the Juguna people, the Terra Indigena Pakisamba, and here are the Arara. And this is Altamira City and the Trans-Amazonica Road. So, um, after the, the dam being built, started built, being built in 2010, um, and then started to operate in 2015, you have this change in the in the, the flow. So the this part with the pink uh, stripes is uh, now a dewatered section. So in Portuguese they call TBR. It's the trecho de vazão reduzida which would be like a uh, reduced stretch flow, reduced flow stretch. So all this part has uh, been affected with a lot of the hydrologic alterations, which are the focus on this uh, presentation, on this chapter of my PhD. So being diverted, uh, a great part of the flow being diverted to produce energy here, where are the turbines of the Belamonte site? 
And this is Pimental Dam, which uh, regulates now the flow that goes to, to the Big Bend or that is diverted to the Belamonte. This was also a channel built. So you have a, a very complex engineer um, project with uh, some, here there's like six turbines, but the main power house is here with 18 turbines. It's a dam that is uh, called the Runoff River Dam, that is, it depends on the flow of Shingo River. So it has an installed capacity of uh, 11,000 and something megawatts. But the energy provided per year is 4,571 megawatts because non, uh, they, the, the 18 turbines only run if the flow is really high. So that's why it, that's, there's a difference between the energy provided and the installed capacity, which is also a discussion that is being made now about the, how much Belmont is producing energy, right? So, and I know that it's a very uh, complex uh, project to explain. So if anyone has any doubt, you can raise your hand and doing it meanwhile my presentation for if anyone needs it because I know it's, it's not easy to explain that. <laughs> okay. So the amount of water being diverted from the big end of Xingu, it's it was a discussion made in the environmental impact statement and also approved by the water agency in Brazil, the ANA, Agencia Nacional das Águas. And in the environmental impact statement, they call this minimum amount of water that cannot be diverted as an hydrogram of consensus. But there are no consensus because they, they were not, not participation for uh, creating a consensus. So um, this publication here is from the Juruna Independent Monitoring. They are doing uh, an independent monitoring of the water and the fisheries. So this, uh, this figure explained the hydrogen is from this very important uh, project that they are doing there. And they called uh, conflict hydrogen because it's it now the main struggle is how much water you have for their livelihoods, for the ecosystem in the big, big bend of Shingo River. So this picture is showing the monthly flows, monthly average flows in the historical series. You can see the, the, the peak flows is around 20,000 centimeters, cubic meters per second. And this is uh, a very important fluid pose for all the, the ecosystem, the chelonians, the frugivorous fishes, the, the other ornamental fishes. And after the dam, we can see that the, the hydrogram has much, much lower, adding until 80% uh, of diversion. So to explain that, um, you have the two hydrograms, the green one and the yellow one. So the, this hydrogram of consensus that it's in the environmental impact statement, they have this uh, monthly flow values, minimum monthly flow values should be uh, to guarantee the, the life in the big band of Shingo River. But if you compare the, the mean of this historical series with the minimum amount, you see that it's much lower. And the peak for the hydrogram A, it's 4,000 cubic meters per centimeter per second. And the hydrogram B, the peak, uh, the peak of the flood would be 8,000, when the, the mean was 20,000. So this, uh, they do this A and B hydrogram because they, they say that um, the 4,000 would be more stressful for the environment, so they would like one year is the hydrogram A and the second year is the hydrogram B. They would do like this for the ecosystem have, has more uh, chance of surviving in the hydrogram B. And doing like this, they can provide energy and guaranteeing the life. But 
a lot of studies are saying that this uh, hydrogram, these minimum values, they are not, they know, they have no guarantee of uh, survival for the ecosystem and the livelihoods in this region in the Boca and the Shibu. So you have uh, reports from the environmental agency saying that in the during the the discussion for the license, you have the FUNAI agency saying about the cultural impacts on the, the livelihoods of indigenous people there. And you have this other important, important uh, publications, this one from the Juvenile People, reports from the Prosecution Ministry, um, and also this important paper from the Federal University of Pará, who is an institution that is doing a lot of efforts of discussing this hydrogram. And so they, 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 in the environmental impact statement, they argue that this, these values can are based on minimal levels of navigation and guaranteeing a flood in the Igapo, which is uh, the main discussion that these papers are saying that this amount of water doesn't guarantee the flood of Igapos and all the survival of this ecosystem. So if anyone has doubt about this, also a little difficult to explain, you can just say. So about my research questions for this chapter of my PhD, uh, I'm working on these three main questions. So how did this change in the hydrological regime occur in this region that has been the water, the big dimension of the river, since the Belamonte demonstration? And the, the other part is about how, how do the Arara indigenous people of the Volta de Nostro perceive these transformations and impacts in their livelihoods. And this, uh, I'm, in this moment, in this chapter, I'm also focusing in fisheries and navigation. So how has fisheries and navigation been affected by hydrological change on the Arara perspective and what it is its importance for a data livelihoods. Okay, someone has something to say. Um, about uh, theory and methods, methods in this chapter, um, I'm using the concept of environmental flow, so the, the flow necessary for guaranteeing uh, life in an ecosystem. Um, and also the, the discussion about how do you discuss the cultural connections, the cultural aspects of an environmental flow? How, how do you understand indigenous local knowledge, the, the ecological knowledge of local communities uh, to build an environmental flow recommendations in, a, in a, a situation like that when you have hydrological alterations. And also uh, working on the biocultural connections and indigenous local knowledge to, to understand the perceptions of the Arara through the, uh, about these impacts and cultural aspects of the uh, cultural heritage about the river and how this changes affect that. So. Uh, in terms of methods uh, about the hydrological issues, I'm using the EPA software, the indicator of hydrological alterations. And also uh, I'm thinking about other hydrological indicators, especially about hydro peakings uh, that are happening there, which this is a part that is in, in progress now. And for the, the perceptions of the errata, I'm using um, some exploratory data data that I have now uh, because of the COVID you have all the, the challenges for um, doing research in indigenous lands. So uh, by now I have some exploratory da data. So some interviews with key informants and also coding uh, the secondary da data that has about them. So about the data I'm using, the hydrological data come especially from the HydroWeb platform, which is uh, from the water agency uh, that has the hydrological data. And for the histor historical series, um, we have 42 hydrological cycles 
uh, that I'm using, and I'm using the database of uh, Siddiqui, which is a PhD student yeah. here. It's a pleasure for uh, using a, a database of such a good paper published, which uh, was uh, applied to organize all the, the, the flow data. And I'm using this database for understanding the how was the pre dam situation, how was uh, the the river before the dam, and you have a, a good database from 71 to 2015. And for the post dam um, alterations, I'm using the data from the Mangueiras station, which is right above the Pimental Dam, right in the beginning of the, the water stretch. And since the operation in 2015 until last year, 2021. And about the, the Arara perception, um, as I said, I'm using secondary data, data about some reports, um, like uh, the persecution ministry report and other um, other papers that was that were uh, made, like this one that uh, I, I was part of it. Was it was the main author was an Arara leader, the adult Marara. Uh, this paper is, is about uh, Indigenous Museum uh, Initiative, which is headed, headed from the Arara, the Volta Ximbu. They are doing this museum in homage of Leoncio Arara, which is this uh, main leader, storyteller, shaman, healer, uh, which was very important for this, the demarcation of their land, and he was deceased in 2017. So they have a collection of videos, of interviews of him that I've been supporting their association on this project. And this is also a data, uh, data that I'm thinking on using because he was the main storyteller of his community and had, had all the, the stories about their uh, cultural relations with the environment. And also some exploratory field that was possible during last year. Um, and that, yeah. So uh, starting some preliminary results uh, of this analysis, as I said, uh, it's not uh, established yet, it's in discussion. So uh, I'll be very happy to hear suggestions and comments about it. I know that here in TCT we have uh, great researchers in this area. So showing uh, just some preliminary results about uh, how the, the flood pools was the, the shape of it, uh, the monomodal flood pools typical from the Amazon with great values of flows. You have peaks of 20,000 cubic meters per second and also a big variation um, which low flows can go to lower than 1,000. So you have a big intra-annual variation and also inter-annual variation because of uh, climate phenomena. So, so after the construction of an operation of Bellamonte Dam, uh, the main discussion that the papers are uh, in literature now are discussing is the reduction of the magnitude because of the diversion of water. So here you have how um, the, the, the means of pre and post them for each month, you have a, a very big, a big uh, difference between them, especially in the rise, the, the flood and the, the fall periods. And what the Arara indigenous people and also the Shibuna are telling and the other communities of the Big Bend of Shingu River are always saying, is that the fishing was a very important activity for their subsistence and economic uh, income. Um, and it's been, it, it is the main uh, activity being, being affected in their livelihoods, like the commercial fishing is, al is almost ending in, the, in this region. So they are saying the fish is, is, is uh, thin because he cannot, uh, eat the fruits because the river doesn't flood enough uh, for the fruits falling in the water and the fish eat. 
So uh, some other preliminary results you have here um, the story called Sirius, and I put it here some this like yellow squares to show um, the link between the El Nino climate phenomena and uh, the the cycles who had lower flood pools. So the years where the El Nino was stronger, you had like a, a lower peak, and this is, um, and in 2016, the first year of operation of the dam was also a strong El Nino year, so you can see that it's like the worst year that happened, so in that Juruna monitoring publication, they say it's the year of the end of the world, so really uh, this coincidence was really uh, it's really shocking for the, the, the communities there. So you can see, look in the pre and post, uh, this lower magnitude, which is very evident. And also that now it's uh, it always happened, these extreme low flows, which were more common, the red part here, on El Nino years. And, but not every year has this, uh, such dry seasons. And this is happening every year. So showing a little bit also um, how the, the floods are, flood behavior. Um, so picking the, the three driest years of the historical series, we can see that even in, with El Nino uh, years, strong El Nino years, uh, the flood pools, it has a shape um, of uh, the fall dry and rising period. And after that, we with the operation of the Belamonte then we can see how the hydro pickings are visible here and also how the fall period is um, is getting it's uh, the falling waters are happening faster and the rising are taking more time to start so the dry season is being larger and the flood season is being reduced so uh, these months on the fall and rising are the ones who has the, the most difference in the magnitude prediction. And you can see that the duration of the high flow, which the, it's uh, settled with this value, which can be discussed what is exactly high flow there. It's also a discussion to be made. But using this parameter, we can see that the duration is 70% less, and this affects directly the cycle of the aquatic fauna. So this is another coefficient that shows the distribution of the flow in the year. It's normalized, so it's not the value of the flow. But just to show how, uh, comparing the pre and the post them, how the, this, the flood is like struggling. The flood is being reducing its duration. So the rising and the fall periods are really being affected also. Another big issue that is happening is the hydro pickings that are happening in this part. So uh, for example, um, in this paper from Almeida uh, that he made from the Huma data case, the hydro pickings are being more common and downstream the Madeira dams, uh, which are also runoff river dams. But here in uh, the case of the Big Ben of Shingu River, you have both case things happening, the hydro pickings and the reduction of the magnitude. So we have a lot of uh, this overlay of different uh, hydrologic alterations really stress even more the, the environment there. And so you have, we have a rise of 20-85% of the, the hydro pickings. Remember that we are using daily flows, so we are not considering the, the hydro pickings that can happen during the day the, using hourly data, which is something that Almeida did for the Human Data River. And uh, this is a study that I, uh, I'm seeing if I'm able to do that with the, the database that is available. But this is only uh, hydro pickings using daily flow. So it's, for example, uh, one week, the 
some uh, strange hydro pickings that are happening. Like uh, one one week, the the the, it's, the the level of the water raises, and then the next week it goes, it falls down, which is very abnormal, considering how was the how was the flow before. So these are some phrases that the, the indigenous Arara and Juvan are saying. The, way the river is crazy, it's like a child, it's uh, a continuous rise and fall, and uh, vaza, how they say. So these uh, hydro pickings are uh, creating a lot of problems there. Here, just to show a little bit, uh, was like the first uh, organization of the data, and you, you can see comparing uh, the shape of the hydrogram, how it's really visible, the hydro pickings. Uh, that are happening there. They are called hepicates. So, as I as I uh, said before, the short and fluid effects, the spawning cycle of fish and chelonians also are very important uh, there. The trakaja. So the the fruits maturation peri periods are also important in these periods of rise and fall. That's why the fruits are falling. In the ground instead of in the water, and I remember the importance for the food of this aquatic fauna because it's a clear water river, so the fruits are, has a, this main importance on the, the food, and uh, again the, the rise and fall periods really be really being affected in their magnitude and hydro pickings. So um, how to establish? Uh, how much water needs to flood a nigapon the big band of Shingulifu. This is really a challenge and a lot of different papers are discussing that. So the environmental impact statement says that 8,000, which is the hydrogram B, uh, there is a flood of nigapo of the alluvial vegetation, which a lot of papers are discussing that it's not true. So you have, for example, the, the report of the Shilonians uh, made from the Museo Emilio Gioji saying that you need 3,000 cubic meters per second for flooding Aigapo for the Shilonian cycles, for the survival of the Shilonians, the Trakaja. You have other reports, the, the same report, uh, environmental impact statement, sometimes they say that the minimum for flooding in Igapo is 1,500, 15,000 uh, cubic meters per second. And also this uh, publication of uh, Zuanon et al. saying that the monitoring of Juruna says that this value of uh, flow did not flood uh, important Igapo for them. So it's really difficult to, to find a parameter for that. But most of the study are showing that the hydrogram B, and especially the hydrogram A, which the minimum water is only 4,000, they are really unfeasible for the reproduction and survival of that ecosystem. Right? So another important uh, argument is that 2016, which is that, that uh, very strong El Nino year and the beginning of the operation dam, of the dam, saying that um, the peak of the year was 10,000 and was already a very low value and was near with fish and trakaja with dried eggs. So a very stressful for that environment. And so uh, with now with all the turbines and the installer capacity finished, maybe this will be um, repeating again. Last year was almost a little, little higher than that. I think. So the Shalonians are uh, this very important species for the indigenous and local communities as food, as also uh, cultural aspects of the how they get the trakaja. It has a very its uh, importance on the region. So in the environmental impact statement, it shows the the. The, the months that they are entering in the Igapo forests, which are the, the rising period, and the values are like 7,000 uh, cubic meters per second. So you see that 
this rising period and falling periods is the periods that they are entering and going out of the call and are the main problems that are happening are in these periods. So about uh, hydro picking and risks to navigation, um, I, I brought here some like strange hydro pickings that are happening. Like, like I said, in one week it rises, in the other one falls. And this is uh, um, what a leader Arara said, that they are used to the, the cycle of the rain. And if you think the, 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 the flood season is coming and you forget that the river is not like that and accidents can happen. So uh, here's some pictures showing a little bit of differences between the, the dry and grazing period. You see there is a very rocky environment. So this hydro picking is happening. It gets much more risk for uh, the, the boats hitting a rock, for example. And, uh, I, I've been navigating in this region since 2014, and I only trust indigenous people there, the local uh, local villagers or the local communities for navigating in this uh, very complex channels and meanders. You never know when you have a rock or not. So uh, they are really the specialists of the navigation in this region. So talking more about the navigation here, uh, I apologize, this map is a little confused, but um, so they are located downstream, the Pimental Dam, so you see the roots in the pink stripes, you see that uh, there's a lot of navigation routes connecting all the, the communities in this region. And um, so in the, the water section, you have a lower magnitude, so, uh, and this hydro picking, the flashiness of changing the flow, uh, as I said, uh, it it's, uh, raises the risk of accident and also being having a lower magnitude you have a lot of sequero which is a type of waterscape that you cannot pass when it's too dry so um, this is the main uh, issues that are happening in this stretch but when they are going through their village to Altamira city they pass through the Pimental Dam you have a system to transpone the dam by land and when you get uh, upstream the Pimental Dam, you have a lot of other problems there because now being a, a reservoir, you have all flooded these uh, islands that were before and it's a giant lake and uh, you don't have more the, the island, the forest in the island was a protection for the wind. So you get now in this all oh, this stretch from Pimental to Altamira. You have a more windy and more waves environment, and uh, um, it's also a more more risk of accident because of the banzero that you fall. These big winds, the big movement of the water because of that, and we, they reported two uh, flooding in this part, one in 2021, 2020, 2021. That was really dangerous because of that. They they have been complaining of this, and. In. So uh, about different types of motors, uh, motors boats, you have the habeta, which is the, the, the more uh, used in the stretch area, but uh, which is better for the, the driest part because it's uh, more easy to maintain. But when you go upstream Pimental, you need a powerful motor for escaping this banzero, these waves. So you have this problem also of which technology of motorboat, because in each part you have one specific type of motorboat that is better. So going to the biocultural connections part. Um, so since the environmental impact statement in the license process before, before the approval, the FUNAI agency, the Fundação Nacional Índio, uh, which it, it's, uh, takes part in the licensing process because uh, indigenous communities are being affected. They did a very important report and uh, they said about the cultural impacts on the Arara da Volta Cartesian Group, mainly because of the, the, the things that Leoncio Arara, this uh, leader that I said, you know, is being. Um, that was uh, had some interviews in the environmental impact statement. 
that he was saying about the spirits, what the spirits of water, what will happen to them. Because changing the environment will also change them. So they they say about the spirits who who takes care, who are like the owners of water, owners of forests, or owners of the animals. So uh, Nelson Arada in that time, in 2009, says about that about the mãe d'água who takes care of the water. And uh, he says about uh, knowledges and protections that are necessary for a person to walk safely on the river and the forest. And these spirits, they can, um, they can affect the persons and then you need spiritual healing for dealing with that. So you have some also other issues like sacred places, places who has the storytelling of uh, ancestral villages, of uh, the importance of waterfalls as a place very sacred, and a lot of uh, places in all over the big bend of Shingu River who has symbolic aspects very important for the Arara and Yuruna, and not only the indigenous, but also the other villages of this region. So uh, for understanding these biocultural connections, understanding the perceptions linked to the hydrological alterations, I'm using as like a, a category for understanding a, a, a work that is already done in the territorial and environmental management plan of the Boca Grande do Xingu, which was a study of an ecologist in Conocimento. He did his uh, research about different uh, waterscapes recognized by the Juvenia Arara in that river. So you have the, the, the waterfall, you have the island, what is in Igapo, what is uh, Petral, Poço, these different types of environment that sometimes link it to, to the, the presence of rocks or the vegetation that is there, if it's able to navigate or not. Uh, so he, he already made these categories that are recognized by them. And so I'm understanding how these uh, waterscapes are being affected in, in relation to fisheries and navigation. So again, the, uh, just remember some uh, phrases of the indigenous communities, especially the Arara, the fruits falling on the ground because the water like doesn't reach. And some uh, other issues that are appearing in the interviews with the fishers is like which which type of uh, waterscapes are worse for fish traps because of hydro picking. The fisher enters in the Igapo in the in the creeks and they get trapped when uh, the flow reduces too fast. So they say, for example, the floodplain lakes, like the one in this picture, this is an island and this is the lake inside the island. So um, the, this is a type of environment that is a really fish trap with this hydro picking and flashiness in the flow. And also the creek springs, because the, the fishes go uh, see the raising waters, they enter in the creeks and they get uh, trapped in the springs, in the grottas, how they say. And that, that grotta, that spring stayed dry for a long period and it, it, it has a, a high mortality of fishes. Also, an uh, interesting thing that they said is about the big snakes. The big snakes, uh, I wrote wrong, sorry. The big snakes, not snakes. The big snakes has this symbolic uh, value in all over the Amazon. Uh, a lot of different perceptions uh, uh, about the big snakes. And for them, uh, they are like a very dangerous animal, of course. And it's, it lives in the Poço, in the, this waterscape of the places where the, the, the channel is deeper. And they say that with this change in the river flow and being drier, they, are, they may be changing place. And maybe they will change places where they use and offer more dangers of being, uh, being taken by a big snake, right? So uh, Leon Chorara already says a lot about the big snakes and the menaces and how it is like this, uh, this, uh, this, how do you say, this entities of the water that you need to take care. So it's, it's not only an animal, it has a, a cultural value also. 
And also thinking about the daily river activities in the port, the women washing her clothes, people doing farinha, uh, eh? doing the manioc floor, and how this changes affect these activities. You have the children uh, swimming in the river, now the, the, the parents are more worried about this quick change that can uh, can create like a big flood, an enxurrada, how they say. Uh, other other worries of them uh, about the subsurface water level, with uh, they they are calling this phenomenon as a sungação. So, with the driest uh, the 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 lower water levels, the subsurface water level could be affected from it also, and can also affect uh, the land forms. And they say also about medicinal plants and also parts of fauna that are used for medicinal, traditional medicinal knowledge and how this uh, navigation issues or the Igapo uh, forest has been affected and these places are also source of uh, very important medicinal uses. So as uh, preliminary findings till now, um, I think the main discussions that are being made in this chapter, which is not finished yet, it's about this discussion of the hydrogram of consensus, which uh, it, it, it doesn't guarantee the, the life of the ecosystem, but not only uh, about the reduction of the magnitude, but you have other hydrologic alteration that maybe are being underestimated, like the hydro pickings and how it offers other dangers. So uh, the main discussion about re needing to discuss the environmental flow concept of this dam and thinking how this can be made with the, the local knowledge, which is important uh, for the local communities having a protagonism in this decision-making processes. And uh, thinking about this uh, hydrological analysis and monitoring, how they need to shape rules of operation to avoid all these risks that are happening there. Risks like the, the ones related to navigation, how the navigation are more much more risky now, and the other uses of the river, and how communication needs need to be improved, and also having an emergency action plan, uh, dealing better with the risks. risks. Um, also, we can see this, the perceptions of Arara linked to this cultural impact already, uh, already reported before, and uh, raising their insecurity, their fear related to the river, restriction of freedom, and all these issues, of course, are related for guaranteeing a life on the ecosystem and the livelihoods, the local livelihoods in this region of the Big Bend of Shingo River. And because of that, uh, thank you very much again to CD for inviting me. Uh, thank you for the Arara villages. Uh, thank you for Leon Arara for all these other researchers that uh, supported the project that I'm participating the after hydropower dance project from uh, PAPESP, the CNHRCN project from the Amazon Dams Network, other projects that were executed and had some participation there, like this one from the CAPS PBA. This is our domain references, my contact, and also as I'm here in Gainesville, this is my WhatsApp. If someone wants to meet me and talk more about it, I'll be here till Sunday. So I'm free for uh, exchanging more to whom is interested. And thank you very much, all the institutions again, the, the CAP is who is financing the, the this visiting scholar period, the University of Sao Paulo, the Florida International University, and the University of Florida. And of course, again, the Amazon Dance Network, which is what started all these links. And thank you very much. Thank you, Betty. Thank you, Patricia.